Welcome to On the Money with NEDAP, New York City's show about community economic justice. Uh, each month, On the Money tackles a different economic justice issue that affects New Yorkers and their communities. Uh, my name is Deyanira Del Rio, and today we'll be talking about immigrants' rights in the banking system. And what I mean by that is um, the rights of immigrants to open bank accounts, obtain loans, send money transfers, known as remittances, to their home countries, and other ser financial services. Um, so today we're going to be talking about how barriers to some of these basic financial services and other forms of economic discrimination are affecting immigrants and immigrant neighborhoods in New York City. Um, this is an issue that's very dear to my heart and that I'm really glad that we're addressing because like so many immigrant issues, uh, there's tons of misinformation out there about immigrants' rights. There's lots of people, even officials and government agencies that tell immigrants you have no rights in certain realms. And uh, that's not the case. And certainly in, in this uh, instance, with this set of issues, the immigrants do have rights. And so one of the things we're going to do today is give you the right information uh, about immigrants' rights. We're going to dispel some very common myths and misconceptions about immigrants' rights in this realm. And finally, we'll be speaking with two New Yorkers, uh, Andres Uribe and Zoe Sullivan who are, have generously agreed to be our guests today. Um, both Andres and Zoe are from Forest Hills Community House, and they're in the process of organizing a community development credit union in Jackson Heights, Queens, in order to help meet the financial services and credit needs of residents of Jackson Heights. And they're gonna be talking to us about their project today. Um, and if you don't know what a community development credit union is yet, you will by the end of the show. And um, they're actually really great alternatives to banks for many people. So, we're going to be getting to that uh, shortly. But first, I want to thank both Zoe and Andres for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for thank being here. Thank you for having us. Yeah. It's great, and I'm very excited for the show. Um, so before we launch into some of the financial issues, uh, we want to start by giving just a quick overview, a little snapshot of what we're talking about. Um, what is immigration to New York City look like? And um, many people know that New York City is a city of immigrants. Um, but you may not know that actually 40% of all New Yorkers are foreign born. That's three million people, uh, three million New Yorkers are, are actually immigrants. And um, what's interesting about New York City is that there are immigrants from virtually every country you could think of um, in this city. And we actually have a, a diagram that shows where New York's immigrants are from according to the 2000 census. And I just want to point out that um, the numbers that I'm giving are actually probably much lower than the actual reality because of the fact that the census was done in 2000. Um, and it is the census data, so we're, you know, it's, it's not addressing all of the undocumented immigrants in New York City, of which there are about 700,000, according to some reports. So a lot of immigrants and a lot of issues that they're dealing with in the financial services realm. Um, so 32%, just to give you a few figures, 32% of immigrants in New York City are from Latin America, with the Dominican Republic and Mexico um, sending the greatest number of immigrants. 21% of New York immigrants um, are from the Caribbean, and 24% are from Asia. 19% are from Europe, you can see, and the remainder are from Africa and other regions. So clearly we're talking about a huge number of people, a huge proportion of New Yorkers that are affected by these issues. Um, and one of the areas that's been the most transformed by this influx of immigrants is Queens. Um, so if New York City is the city of immigrants, then Queens is certainly the borough of immigrants with 46% of Queens residents actually being immigrants. And I think there's something like 167 nationalities and 116 languages represented in the borough. So Bozo and Andres, you work in one of the most diverse neighborhoods, not just of Queens or of New York City, but really in the country. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the immigrant populations that you work with in Jackson Heights and also some of the services that Forest Hills um, provides to them? Um, I can talk a little bit about the services that the Forest Hills Community House provides. Um, mm -hmm. We have in Jackson Heights um, an adult education program that serves about 600 people a day and the classes are primarily English as a second language classes for, um, again, for adults. We also have citizenship classes and literacy classes. Um, in addition to that, we have a senior center for gay, lesbian, and transgender seniors and we have a leadership program for young women. Um, and I work in the Employment and Community Development mm -hmm. Department, which really works closely with the Adult Education Program. Mm -hmm. Great. And Andres, how are you affiliated with the Forest Hills Community House? 
Uh, I related for the Forest Hill Community House from about uh, a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was very fun story. <laughs> A friend of a friend of mine was studying English uh, mm -hmm. as a second language in Forest Hills Community House, mm -hmm. and he invited me all the time to some of our some of their meetings about the one cooperative business that they're trying to form. Mm -hmm. And he invited me all the time, all the time. I said no, 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 no. I can't. I don't have any time. Mm -hmm. But finally, I went there and uh, I was very impressed. I was very impressed. See we a lot see of people. Why. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people from different cultures having mm -hmm. the same necessity mm -hmm. and trying to go for the same goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was very, very fine for me. It sounds really great. And I understand that Forest Hills Community House, you guys work with pretty much you know, all of the various um, immigrant populations that are in Jackson Heights. And people that know Jackson Heights, you know that you walk down Roosevelt Avenue and you feel like you're crossing into several different countries. Um, so it seems like a great thing, and I'm very interested in hearing you guys um, discuss your latest project, your community initiative of the credit union. Um, before we get there, I want to now back up a little bit and talk about what we mean when we're talking about barriers to financial services for immigrants. Um, and I think one of the ways to best start off is by dispelling one of the most common um, pieces of misinformation that's out there that's given to immigrants, mm -hmm. which is that you need to be a citizen or um, a legal immigrant to open a bank account, um, that you need a piece of US ID or a social security number to open a bank account. And that's actually not true. Um, so to explain this a little bit, I mean, this is something we hear at virtually every presentation we do on these issues. Um, but the actuality is that the laws that govern banking have nothing to do with immigration status, um, which is to say that you don't have to have your documentation in order to open accounts, and not only that, but to get loans, to send money abroad, to start a business and buy a home. Actually, if you're undocumented, there are plenty of places that will help you, and that's not to say that there aren't unique challenges. If you mm -hmm. lack a bank account or social security number, there, of course, are, and there are many institutions and banks that won't help you, um, but there are a host of others that will, and we're going to provide those resources um, just in just a few minutes. So if you need a pen and paper, um, we ask you to go get that now.